And we're back with Roger Waters. Roger, your strong opinions about other things. I know that the White Helmets, at some point they asked you for your help and you're like, no, because you're a weird organization. And I mean, but no, hang on, the White Helmets, the White Helmets uh, approached me twice. Once was for a fundraiser in London organized by the Syria campaign. Okay, and I looked in it and I thought, there's something, who are these people? And, and so I did quite a fair bit of research. What is it that you see and in that organization that the Western mainstream doesn't? Well, hang on a minute. Oh, what? The White Helmet? What is it? Yeah. Well, um, for instance... Because they're obviously for instance, idolized in the West. For instance, well, okay. For, I'll tell you. Just just a couple of things. We could be here all day talking about the White Helmets because that is a very deep rabbit hole. For a start, it, there is no evidence to support the idea that it's a grassroots organization in rebel-held territories in Syria that grew up from people who just wanted to go and help civilians get out of bomb buildings. No, no evidence to support that. So, so that's one thing. When I made my speech, I gave a little speech in Barcelona, because the other thing is, a French guy who supports the white helmets, he goes around the world climbing tall buildings wearing a white helmet, and he said, I want to come on stage and give a message to the children of Syria, we haven't forgotten you, can I come? And I went, uh, no, you can't come on stage and say that. I mean, I'm sure he's sincere, and, <clears throat> and whatever. But I explained why. This happened, it, my gig was on April the 14th, this year. Uh, yeah, this year, in Barcelona. On April the 7th, it is alleged, there was a chemical attack in Douma, in Syria, and a video appeared um, with people hosing down children and kids with, get, you know, masks on their faces and blah, 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 and all of that, made by White Helmets. And the White Helmets sent this video and it went viral, blah, 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 blah. On the, on the evidence of that video, um, the governments of the United States of America, the UK and the Republic of France all decided to go and bomb Syria. And just on the basis of that, uh, I stood up on stage and said, I think I have this, this, I think it would be huge error to go and bomb airfields in Syria until we know what happened. The United States and the UK and France did send a hundred cruise missiles into Syria. I don't think they did much damage. Thank goodness they didn't kill people. But they did do that and they did. And then the people left. And the next day, two journalists went in. Robert Fisk, who worked for The Independent, which is a perfectly reputable uh, English news broadsheet. Well, it's tabloid, actually, but... And, and also a, a strange um, journalist. He was um, working for a conservative Christian TV station from Texas, and his name was Pearson Sharp. And they both extensively went all over doom. They both went to the hospital where the video had been uh, shot and everybody told them the same story. Absolutely nobody knew anything about any chemical attack. The doctors said there was no chemical attack. We had a few people in who'd got dust in their throats. There was not a single death in Duma that day. Nobody, nobody was killed. Certainly nobody was uh, um, affected by chemicals of any kind. And so there's these two independent journalists in there and sending out these reports that were unequivocal. And I believe, I believe them to be true. Funnily enough, the official, you know, chemical weapons inspectors went in four or five weeks later with all their stuff and their report came out. And they said they couldn't find a single trace of any nerve agent. They found chlorinated something, or I can't remember how it was phrased, which could be a bag of salt. Could be anything, you know, but so they did not, so they, the official report is now out. Nobody read it. It wasn't news. You couldn't see it on CNN because it's not the narrative that they follow. Their narrative is that there was a chemical attack and the White Helmets are wonderful. 
I just have to say this one more thing, because I said this in Oslo, and I will say it whenever this comes up. If there is a grassroots body called the White Helmets of volunteers, separate for the people who actually it started in Istanbul, it wasn't, it didn't start in Syria, it was started by an English soldier uh, in Istanbul. But if that body exists, and they, and they go and help people after, you know, either Assad or the Russians or somebody else has dropped bombs on them, then I, I support them wholeheartedly with every fibre of my being. But all the evidence points to the fact that that is not the reality. I don't know if you... Did you, did you see the, the documentary that won the Oscar? Yes, I have. I mean, have you ever seen anything so obviously scripted and carefully shot and put together? Did that look like a documentary that come out of a war? That's another thing I want to talk about.